Hello, everybody. So we are continuing our series for uh, the cloud service from scratch series that we have started right now. And today we are going to be going to be majorly focusing on the cloud infrastructure and architecture, and we're going to be, get a deep dive into these aspects as well. So let's start. Um, so today, uh, the first thing that we are going to discuss is going to be about components of components for assembling cloud. This is going to be a major thing that we are going to talk about today. So what are going to be the components that actually allow us to build a cloud service, right? If we uh, break this topic down into smaller chunks, uh, let me just uh, grab this tool here. Let's see. Uh, so we have a system. First of all, we need a we need a computer system for developing a cloud service because mostly this is going to be revolving around this computer system. And other than that, we are going to use within that system, we are going to use some two major two major things. Um, first is going to be the Docker Engine API. We will get deeper into this a lot more in the future videos. So we have this. And then we have system-based APIs. We have these two major components regarding computer system. Then we have a middleware. Paired volume and we have reverse proxy. Let me just move this here and write it here, reverse proxy. And then we have our front end. So these are going to be our components for assembling cloud. And let's get, let's go deeper what these components do and how would we assemble these together to make a properly formatted like architecture of a cloud service, right? So let me just explain these things one by one so you guys can actually understand how these things operate and why do we need these components to begin with, right? So the thing is, first of all, let's focus on this thing, the computer system, right? Uh, we have a computer system, and then we have divided this computer system into two APIs, a Docker Engine API and a system-based API. So the thing is, uh, we are going to deploy majorly, we, we want to have an environment that is actually isolated, right? So for that, we need Docker to be there. We need a software that can actually isolate the environment, and the rest of the environment doesn't get affected uh, by the by the by the by the stuff that we do within the Docker engine, by the, within that environment, right? So, for example, if I install some other like Python libraries, that those Python libraries would would be installed within the Docker uh, container itself. We don't have to like change the environmental settings. Uh, in order to, you know, um, embed it. So it actually like uh, makes a, a system more stable because no matter how many users there there are, like whatever they install, those things would be installed within uh, the Docker container itself. It would not be expecting the other systems, right? 
and then we have system based apis uh, the system based apis uh, would majorly be uh, focusing on how to control the system by apis we don't want to manually go into each system and control those system manually we just want some kind of an api that can actually allow us to control those system particularly if, for example if something goes wrong within a particular system we can just use the api to um, to get that uh, information and also to uh, use appropriate commands to uh, repair that system or whatever functionality that we want to we can just use our uh, like system uh, based apis there Docker engine API are very much useful for like controlling the Docker containers and doing uh, stuff with the images as well there, the Docker images and all of this stuff. And then we have the shared volume, right? So shared volume is basically like you can attach multiple computer systems and you can actually share data across those systems via shared, shared volume. So it's actually a very useful tool when we want to have like, for example, let's say if we have a Docker image right and that docker image for example it's say let's economy slash um uh, some docker image so this is going to be very global docker image and we want to store it globally in a shared volume so each system can actually utilize that image which needed right so that data would be shared and can be easily uh, transmitted across the systems when needed so it's a very useful tool to have mostly if you look at azure or aws they have blob storage uh, or S3 bucket, you could say, or blob storage, whatever you want to say. And those data are being majorly stored in this shared volume. So these are the like uh, configuration or the basic concept on how a shared volume works. So it actually provides a lot of utility for us to share our data, should to share the data across the system. So we don't have to like manually migrate the data. We have a very much closed system, closed storage to share the data across the system, right? And then we have the reverse proxy. So let me just, uh, let's, let's just skip it for a bit and let's move on to middleware so you can actually understand how reverse proxy works. So uh, in order to monitor all of the system, because obviously we will have numerous number of these system, right? Like we, would, we wouldn't have only one system. We would have a lot of systems in our data center or whatever you want to say. And these systems obviously are going to be controlled, like the, the data will be shared across via like the shared volume, right? Data would be shared. We will have a number of these systems and we will have the shared volume to, to have this data shared across the systems. And then we want to like have, like we want to IA on all of these systems using a middleware. Like this middleware can have multiple instances. And the major reason why we need a middleware, single point where we can control. Right. The thing is, uh, we want a middleware to majorly focus on having all of the systems in line. Uh, we want to like monitor these systems. For example, all of these systems would have their own data, their own number of GPUs, their own number of like uh, uh, like the Docker, like for example, uh, the number of like models deployed in a system, for example. All of the systems have their have, will have their own data, and all of these systems have will have their own like APIs, Docker Engine API, system based APIs. All of these systems will have their own particular system APIs and Docker Engine APIs. Obviously, the, the APIs would be the same, but obviously we need to control the system like on itself because each system will have its own URL, its its separate URL. So we need a middleware to have an eye and to have to have proper control so we don't have to manually like go with, go within each system and control those apis our middleware will handle it in its own self like you just need to like plug it up for example system one system number uid 1234 or something like that and it will like reach out to that system 
and do whatever functionality that you want to perform within that system. We don't have to care about which system we are accessing. The systems would be handled by this middleware itself. And in order to expose, like for example, these local engine API, system based APIs would actually be local APIs, right? These would be local APIs. These would not be global. So to make them global and to make them accessible, we we need something that can actually do it. We need something that can actually expose these URLs to the public, to the public or like to only to only to the admin side or only to this middleware. We would need reverse proxy for this. A reverse proxy such as Cloudflare, um, such such as SAS, very much uh, Cloudflare is very much known for this kind of a thing. It would allow us to expose these URLs to the public. And in and then we can actually store these particular URLs in our middleware, in our other middleware API, or the database, or whatever you want to say. This middleware will, would be controlling the database in itself, uh, because these APIs would be focusing on uh, performing the computer system tasks, but this middleware be, would be performing majorly the database oriented tasks, right? So proper backend functionality, you would say. So we will actually store these URLs into our middleware that has the database accessibility, right? And then we will have this front end. That front end will be integrated with the middleware backend, right? So this is how like the basic system architecture of a cloud service actually done. So this is how majorly the cloud service architecture runs. We have the shared volume that actually uh, shares the data across systems. We have the system that uses the Docker Engine API and system-based APIs to perform different functionality as per the user needs. We have the reverse proxy. We have the middleware that actually stores the data and also like has the insights of all of the systems that we need and also the front end. So this is the basic architecture on how uh, a cloud service actually runs and how it operates. We will actually dive more deeper into the next video on how, what these black boxes actually do, the Docker Engine API and system-based APIs, and also how we actually assemble like these things. And then afterwards, we can actually move on to the uh, like nitty gritty and the code stuff on how these things actually like perform and how we can actually build our own system. So that, those would be included in the later videos. So if you, if you have any questions, if you uh, have any question that you want to ask, just drop those questions down to the, into the comments section. I would definitely be uh, looking forward to your responses and anything that you guys want to, that can actually help increase the, uh, like the um, overall like improvement of the videos, it, it would definitely be a very great gesture as well. So have a great day, guys. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye.